in order to keep the system going, they can't let money supply decline. But they've let money supply decline, which tells me the plan is to tank the entire credit system. And that's how you will own nothing. The you'll be happy part, I don't know what they're going to put in the water or the air, but that's how you'll own nothing when credit collapses. You're watching Silver News Daily. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best news that you don't want to miss. Now let's get straight to it. In a world where precious metals have always been synonymous with wealth and security, we're on the cusp of a remarkable shift. Imagine for a moment a future where gold, the cane of metals, is dethroned by its less glamorous counterpart, silver. This isn't a distant fantasy, but a reality unfolding before our very eyes. Silver, once overshadowed by the lustrous allure of gold, is now stepping into the spotlight, poised to outshine its esteemed counterpart. Why do you ask? The answer lies not in the vaults of investors, but in the innovative labs of tech companies and the burgeoning demand for green energy solutions. Silver's remarkable conductive properties make it indispensable in the technology sector, a demand that is skyrocketing at an unprecedented pace. But here's where the plot thickens, silver is becoming rarer than gold. Yes, you heard that right. The metal that once played second fiddle to gold is now on a trajectory to become more precious, more sought after, and yes, potentially more valuable. As we embark on this journey through the evolving landscape of precious metals, I invite you to delve deeper into this narrative to understand the forces propelling silver into the stratosphere. Stay with us as we explore how silver is not just catching up to gold, but is set to surpass it, rewriting the rules of value, rarity, and investment. Remember, the world of precious metals is about to be turned on its head, and the question on everyone's lips shouldn't be got gold, but rather, got silver? Join us as we unravel this unfolding story, a story that promises not just to redefine an industry, but to offer unprecedented opportunities for those ready to look beyond the conventional and embrace the future of wealth. Um, and that could lead to the price going up. And then, you know, with gold going up, um, you can also just look at the, the gold-silver ratio because um, that's a historically, it's not stable, it's got a really wide range, but it does operate within that range. In other words, if gold gets too expensive, people start buying silver as the next best thing because and because it's relatively cheap. Well, we're in that kind of range again. I think the uh, gold silver ratio is something like 85 right now, right? Maybe even 90. Um, and that's usually the point at which silver starts going up faster than gold. So if you've got gold going up and silver rising faster than gold, um, it's not very hard to, uh, to get to the point where the gold silver ratio is down to 40, where it's been multiple times historically. So let gold go to maybe $4,000 an ounce, which it could easily do in the not too distant future with the way the world is. And let the gold to silver ratio go, go down to, you know, 40, 50, something like that, where it's been multiple times in history. And then boom, $100 silver, you know, so it's very easy mathematically to, um, to watch silver do these things and get us to $100 silver. And I, I think, um, you know, even if silver doesn't quite get to 100, um, we're still going to look at the silver price of four or five years from now and think, man, I should have loaded up at uh, the 2004 price. And uh, uh, so I, I think this is a good time to be adding to silver, especially physical silver, where the, uh, the, the premiums are not crazy. So you can buy good quality silver coins for three, four, five dollars over spot, which uh, you guys offer every once in a while as part of your sales. I, I think that's a good thing to be doing now. In the grand tapestry of financial markets, a story of unprecedented transformation is being woven, one where silver, historically seen as gold's understated sibling, emerges as a protagonist. This chapter takes us into the heart of why and how this shift is happening, illuminating the factors that are reversing the age-old roles of gold and silver. At the center of this reversal is a compelling narrative about rarity and value. Traditionally, gold has been the beacon of wealth, a symbol of affluence that has dominated cultures and economies across the globe. However, the unfolding reality presents a starkly different picture. Silver is now becoming rarer than gold. This isn't a speculative forecast, but a statement grounded in the hard truths of production and consumption. The reason behind this seismic shift is twofold. First, silver's consumption in various industries has skyrocketed. Unlike gold, which largely sits in vaults and jewelry boxes, silver is being devoured by the technology sector at an insatiable rate. Its properties as the best thermal and electrical conductor of all metals make it indispensable in a myriad of applications, from electronics to solar panels. 
The result? A dramatic reduction in above-ground silver stocks, which, unlike gold, are not being replenished at the same rate they're being consumed. The second part of the equation is the nature of silver mining itself. Silver is rarely mined on its own. It's often a byproduct of mining for other metals, like lead and zinc. This means that silver production doesn't necessarily respond quickly to price increases. Even as demand soars, the supply side remains constrained by the primary metal's market dynamics. This unique situation presents a market tightening that hints at continued upward pressure on silver prices. Understanding these dynamics is crucial for anyone looking to navigate the precious metals market. The scarcity of silver, coupled with its growing industrial and monetary demand, sets the stage for a dramatic revaluation of its value relative to gold. This chapter lays the groundwork for a deeper exploration of the forces at play in the precious metals market, offering insights into how silver's burgeoning demand and constrained supply are rewriting the rules of value and investment in the 21st century. So as we delve further into the nuances of this market transformation, keep this in mind, the story of silver is not just about a metal becoming more precious. It's a reflection of our evolving world, where technology's needs reshape the very foundations of value and rarity. Stay tuned as we uncover more about how this remarkable element is paving its way to unprecedented heights, challenging our traditional notions of wealth and investment. The U.S. banking sector, especially the local and regional banks, have several big problems, but the biggest one is commercial real estate. It's As part of their business model, they lend money to local builders. So uh, there's a huge amount of paper on their books relating to office buildings and apartment complexes and um, warehouses. And a lot of that paper is going bad. Um, for instance, with office buildings, um, over the past 10 years, a huge amount of office space went up, financed at really low interest rates. Then the pandemic hit and a lot of people found out they like working from home and uh, fewer people or not everyone has gone back to work in office buildings. And so the occupancy rate is low in a lot of big buildings, which makes them not as valuable as they were and they're not generating enough cash flow to necessarily pay off the related debt. And in any event, that debt's coming due at higher interest rates, which uh, make those buildings worth even less. So a lot of office buildings are going to start changing hands, or they are starting to change hands, at lower prices, uh, which means there are embedded losses somewhere out there as those uh, buildings get sold at big losses. A lot of that is on the, uh, the balance sheets of these local and regional banks. So they're going to have to take those losses at some point, and uh, that's going to blow a lot of them up. So uh, the, the one you mentioned, New York Community Bank, um, is in the process of maybe blowing up right now. So that might be one that starts uh, starts a um, kind of a tidal wave of bank um, implosions as everybody looks around for what's next. And then whoever they think is next, they pull their deposits out, which causes those banks to have to sell some of their depreciated assets in order to pay off their depositors, which means they have to take those losses publicly and so on. Uh, and I think we get to a point, very possibly, where another big banking crisis happens and the government has to step in and bail them out. So that's another two or three trillion dollars on top of what we just talked about with government finances. And that might be the thing that shifts the focus away from um, banks or office buildings or whatever and towards the currency, because the bailout is going to be so big on top of all the other borrowing that the government's doing that makes everybody worry about the dollar. So that's when things change. And it could be that this is what makes it change. And if not, there's all kinds of other catalysts out there. there there's so much stuff that could go wrong because so much bad debt has been taken on lately that um, there's no real way to know what the first domino to fall is. But you know that once one falls, um, the rest are in danger. And that's basically the story of the next few years for us, uh, which is the catalyst that's going to blow things up. And and we'll see. But I think right now, the, uh, the leading candidate is local and regional. As we delve into the third step of our journey, we encounter a pivotal force propelling silver into the limelight, the booming technology sector. This isn't merely about a metal gaining a few percentage points in value. It's a narrative of industrial evolution, innovation, and the insatiable demand for a resource that underpins the very fabric of modern technology. Silver's role in the technology sector cannot be overstated. Unlike gold, which is treasured for its aesthetic and monetary qualities, silver is a workhorse. Its unmatched electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and reflectivity make it indispensable in a wide array of applications that define our contemporary lifestyle, 
and the future we're hurtling towards. From smartphones and electric vehicles to solar panels and 5G technology, silver is at the heart of innovation, quietly powering the devices and systems that make modern life possible. This demand is not static, it's growing exponentially. As we stand on the brink of a renewable energy revolution, silver's significance is set to soar even further. Solar panels, which are becoming increasingly vital in our quest for sustainable energy solutions, rely heavily on silver for their photovoltaic cells. Each new solar farm sprawling across hectares of land is a testament to silver's crucial role in our energy future. However, this growing demand comes at a time when silver's availability is becoming more constrained. The technology boom is not just a trend. It's a fundamental shift in how we live, work, and interact with our environment. This shift is creating a demand that current silver production levels are struggling to meet. The gap between demand and supply is widening, setting the stage for significant price movements. This dynamic is not just a matter of economic interest. It's a crucial consideration for investors, industries, and policymakers. The implications of silver's pivotal role in technology extend far beyond the trading floors. They touch on issues of sustainability, resource allocation, and the future of innovation itself. As we explore this burgeoning demand for silver, we're not just charting the course of a precious metal. We're mapping the trajectory of human progress, technology, and the intricate dance between nature's bounty and our insatiable appetite for advancement. The story of silver in the technology sector is a vivid illustration of how deeply interconnected our world has become, where the demand for a single element can have far-reaching implications across industries, economies, and the very fabric of society. Yeah, we're, we're heading into a really contentious election where both sides um, expects the other side to steal the election. So whoever it is that wins this time around, unless it's just a total landslide, see, that would be the thing that saves us if there's a landslide. So there's no way the other side can argue about it. Um, that's highly unlikely. So more than likely, it's going to be a tight election. Um, the losing side is going to um, it's going to believe that the election was stolen. And then you get all the um, all the unrest that flows from the perception of a stolen election. Um, and, you know, I think the one of the reasons for that is that we're just a very divided country right now. Neither side trusts the other side. We both um, believe that um, the guys on the other side are willing to lie, cheat and steal to get what they want. And the other thing is that we've set up an awful lot of electoral systems in U.S. states almost as if we want to be seen cheating because, you know, you've got these voting machines out there that can be hacked. Everybody agrees they can be hacked and they have no paper trail. They're just electronic um, tabulation machines. Um, so you really can't tell what happened. You just see the number there. So that's one thing that makes um, the system really untrustworthy. And then a lot of other states have gone to basically mass mail-in balloting where um, you, you never actually see the person who's voting. You never check their ID. You never prove it's them. You just get something in the mail that has a signature on it. And then you check the signature. And if it's anywhere near the, um, the signature you have on file, then you count the ballot. Uh, and so we already saw a lot of cheating going on in the last couple of elections using um, the mail-in ballot system. And it hasn't really changed. There is still mail-in balloting out there in a lot of states, including mine in Washington state. Um, so we're leaving the door open to mass election fraud. And because of that, whoever loses a close election is going to assume that they got cheated. And that's, that's a really bad recipe for, um, uh, you know, for a political system that really needs to be stable because the financial system is unstable. But if you've got a, a, a political system where people are in the streets, uh, you know, um, rioting over elections and the National Guard is being called out and um, people are being labeled insurrectionists and things like that, um, then that feeds back into the dollar and interest rates and uh, the banking system. Because uh, if we don't trust our our uh, political system, by definition, we can't really trust the financial system because the politicians are running the uh, financial system. So yeah, um, it's, it's completely possible that finance feeds into electoral politics, which feeds back into finance in a kind of a self-reinforcing feedback loop that gives us chaos. And, you know, we got to hope that that's not the case, but we're kind of creating the conditions in which it could be the case. So, yeah, you know, wherever you look, 
there are reasons for anxiety. In this era of unprecedented market dynamics, a profound shift is underway, redefining investment landscapes and challenging conventional wisdom. Silver, once the understated counterpart to the illustrious gold, is now emerging as a star player in the investment arena. This transition is not merely coincidental, but a reflection of deeper, structural changes in the global economy and investment strategies. As we delve into the intricacies of this shift, it becomes evident that silver's rising prominence is underpinned by a growing recognition of its dual role, not only as an industrial metal, but also as a critical investment vehicle. This newfound appreciation is partly due to the introduction of silver exchange traded funds, ETS, which have significantly altered the market dynamics by making silver more accessible to a broader range of investors. These ETIPs, acting as a conduit for massive amounts of capital into the silver market, have extracted substantial quantities of silver from the open market, thereby tightening supply and fueling price increases. The strategic allure of silver is further magnified by its historical volatility and the potential for substantial returns. Informed investors, cognizant of the burgeoning demand from the technology sector alongside the constrained supply, view silver not just as a hedge against inflation or economic uncertainty, as gold often is, but as a high potential investment in its own right. This perspective is bolstered by silver's performance in past cycles, where it has demonstrated the ability to outpace gold in bull markets, offering leveraged returns to those willing to navigate its volatility. Moreover, the evolving narrative around silver is not just about its potential for appreciation, but also about its role as a diversifier in investment portfolios. In a world where traditional asset classes are increasingly correlated, silver offers a unique blend of attributes, combining the safe haven appeal of precious metals with the growth potential of industrial commodities. This dual nature provides investors with a tool for risk management, capable of delivering returns in various economic conditions. However, engaging with silver as an investment vehicle requires a nuanced understanding of the market forces at play. The savvy investor must consider the intricate dance between industrial demand, investment flows, and mining supply, all while keeping an eye on broader economic indicators and technological trends that could impact demand. This approach goes beyond mere speculation, embodying a strategic bet on the future of technology, energy, and monetary policy. As we continue to chart the course of silver's ascendance in the investment world, it's clear that we are witnessing a paradigm shift. Silver's story is no longer just a subplot in the narrative of precious metals, but a main narrative of its own, reflecting broader themes of innovation, sustainability, and economic transformation. The message for investors is unequivocal. The time to reassess silver's role in your portfolio is now, as its journey from the shadows into the spotlight promises not just challenges, but significant opportunities. Yeah, $100 silver, the, the math is very easy to get there, you know, I, that, which is part of why I think we see that in the not too distant future. But one way you get there is um, by having a shortage or, you know, a deficit turned into a shortage where you just can't get the silver that you need, so you've got to pay up for it. And solar power is, is playing a role in that process because that's a fairly new use for silver. Uh, five years ago, so solar was not really a big factor in the silver market, but now it's it's up to uh, um, about one-twelfth of the silver that is taken out of mines each year. So that, that's a big new factor in what was already a tight market. You know, the silver market is already in deficit. In other words, uh, between industrial uses and investment demand, um, more silver is being demanded each year than comes out of the world's mines and that comes from recycling. So we're already running through excess silver stocks that are uh, sitting above ground right now. And those are going to be gone pretty soon. So if you get silver demand or silver demand from solar going up, which it looks like it's going to, because the the next generation of solar panels use more silver per panel than the existing generation, and demand for those next generation panels is spiking. It looks like it's uh, it's going to grow dramatically over the next five years. So you get rising demand for silver from solar and other industrial uses and military uses, which are kind of black box. We don't know what that is, but we know it's a big number. And from investors who are more aggressively than in the past buying silver, then you run out of silver, you know? And if that happens, uh, the price spikes. That's just uh, how commodities markets work. And we've seen that happen in a lot of other commodities over the last few years where um, there, there's a, a shortage, artificial or um, um, organic. 
and the price of the commodity just spikes. So with silver, that's that's easy to envision. And you don't really get um you, you don't really get demand destruction at slightly higher silver prices. In other words, um solar panel manufacturers won't stop using silver until it gets up into the $50 to $100 range. Uh, and even then, that'll happen with a big lag, right? You don't just convert your production processes on a dime like that. So silver could get tighter for industrial reasons. Um, and that could... Navigating the world of precious metals, one can't help but be drawn to the compelling narrative of silver's ascent, a story intricately linked to the constraints and challenges of mining this increasingly vital metal. The silver supply conundrum a pivotal chapter in our exploration underscores the complexities of meeting the burgeoning demand against a backdrop of finite resources and environmental considerations. The essence of this challenge lies in the unique position silver occupies within the mining sector. Unlike gold, which often sees dedicated mining operations, silver is predominantly mined as a byproduct of other metals such as lead, zinc, and copper. This means that the supply of silver is not just a matter of silver demand and price, but intricately tied to the market dynamics and viability of these other metals. Consequently, even as the price of silver increases, it does not directly translate into a proportional increase in silver production, creating a supply constraint that is not easily resolved. This situation is further exacerbated by the cost dynamics associated with silver mining. The process of extracting silver, whether as a primary product or byproduct, is both capital and labor intensive, often involving complex and environmentally sensitive operations. The costs associated with mining, refining, and bringing silver to market, combined with regulatory and environmental considerations, impose significant challenges. These challenges are particularly pronounced in a context where the environmental impact of mining activities is under increasing scrutiny, and the push towards sustainable practices is stronger than ever. Moreover, the current production levels and the declining grades of ore being mined add another layer of complexity to the supply equation. Many of the world's silver mines are experiencing reduced ore grades, leading to higher costs per ounce of silver produced. This scenario, where the effort and resources required to produce silver are increasing, highlights the pressing need for innovation and efficiency in mining practices. The implications of these supply constraints extend far beyond the mining industry, touching on economic, environmental, and technological realms. For investors, understanding the nuances of silver supply is crucial as these dynamics play a significant role in shaping the metal's price trajectory and investment potential. For industries reliant on silver, from technology to renewable energy, the supply challenges underscore the importance of resource efficiency and the exploration of alternative materials. As we reflect on the silver supply conundrum, it becomes evident that we're at a crossroads where the paths of innovation, sustainability, and economic strategy converge. The ability to navigate this complex landscape will determine not just the future of silver mining, but also the role of silver in our technological and economic future. The story of silver is unfolding against a backdrop of unprecedented challenges and opportunities, inviting us to rethink our relationship with this indispensable metal. Well, there are five or six reasons that could explain what's happening, and they all fall into the category of, well, eventually that was going to happen, you know, and gold would go higher. But uh, what, what Doomberg is talking about is, is an especially interesting one. Now, the, the basic story is that a few years ago, China set up a physical gold exchange in Shanghai. Um, and that led some people at the time to start speculating that, uh, you know, maybe physical was finally going to become the price driver rather than the paper games that are played in the West with gold and silver. Uh, and it could be that that's starting to happen right now because um, gold is trading at a premium in Shanghai to the London futures contract price, which means there's an arbitrage. You can... Um, you can buy gold in London, sell it in Shanghai, and pocket the difference. And that's leading a lot of physical gold to move east, um, exports of gold out of London and out of Switzerland are at record levels right now. Most of it's going to China and to an extent Russia and India. So um, what's happening now is that um, at long last, the, um, the migration of gold um, from west to east is actually starting to have a, um, an effect on the price, maybe. And if physical begins to actually set the price, in other words, that's the dominant price that we look at rather than whatever's going on in the futures markets, and it's probably going to be a higher price going forward than we've seen in the past, because if you're buying physical, you're not really 
trying to manipulate gold lower, right? Whereas if you're playing games in the futures markets, yeah, frequently it's it's in your interest to make the price go down. So we'll see. Um, that's that's a possible explanation for what's happening right now, uh, among many other explanations. But it's, uh, I think, in general, a very positive thing for the gold market. Now, as for where we go from here, it seems like we've really broken out of resistance. There's not really any resistance above. And we've been consolidating for many, a couple of years, really, since the COVID uh, era in this, you know, 1600 to 2000 area. So it doesn't seem like it's just been going straight up for years. So it, it seems like we might, uh, it might be time for quite a bit of a rally from here. Your perspective on uh, do, do gold prices just continue to rise in the coming months? Well, the whole um, is 10 is 2000 um, resistance or support question has been interesting for quite a while because we've we've been in a trading range for, like you said, several years where gold will get up to 2000 and then get smacked back down. So it was resistance there. Uh, and finally, gold broke through. And then the question was, well, would 2000 be the floor from now on, which would be great, because especially if you, for instance, own a lot of gold mining stocks, um, the gold miners benefit from the perception that gold is going to stay above 2000 because then you can build in really robust cash flow projections for them and everything because they're getting a lot for the gold that they're selling. Uh, and, you know, that thesis is looking better and better lately because gold is now, like you said, it's up above 2100. So um, that that means 2000 is looking more and more like a legit floor for gold. So even if it gets knocked back down right now, that there's going to be a lot of buying coming in at 2000. In our journey through the remarkable ascent of silver, we've now arrived at a fascinating juncture, the historical perspective and its implication on the present and future dynamics of the silver market. This exploration is not just an academic exercise. It offers profound insights into the shifting balance between silver and gold, illuminating a path that suggests silver's potential to redefine notions of value and investment. Historically, the gold to silver ratio has been a critical metric for understanding the relative value of these two precious metals. Traditionally, this ratio has fluctuated significantly over centuries, influenced by a variety of factors including mining output, monetary policies, and industrial demand. For much of history, the ratio was set by governments and monetary authorities to stabilize monetary systems, often ranging between 12 to 1 and 15 to 1. However, the modern era has seen this ratio expand dramatically, at times soaring to over 100 to 1 reflecting not only the changing economic landscapes, but also the diverging paths of gold and silver. What's particularly intriguing about the current scenario is how these historical precedents inform our understanding of silver's undervaluation and its potential for appreciation. The argument for silver's revaluation is compelling when considering the drastic deviation from the historical norm. If the principle of mean reversion holds true, the potential for correction in the gold to silver ratio suggests a significant upside for silver especially when juxtaposed against the backdrop of rising industrial demand and supply constraints. Moreover, examining the gold to silver ratio in the context of the 1970s, when silver prices experienced a meteoric rise, offers valuable lessons. The conditions that catalyzed the silver rally during that period, including inflationary pressures and geopolitical tensions, bear striking similarities to today's economic environment. This historical parallel provides a roadmap for investors hinting at the conditions under which silver could once again outperform not just gold, but a broad spectrum of investment assets. This analytical journey through time not only highlights silver's historic undervaluation relative to gold, but also underscores its emerging role as a multifaceted asset. Unlike gold, which primarily serves as a store of value and an inflation hedge, silver's burgeoning industrial applications, particularly in areas critical to the green and digital revolutions, position it uniquely at the intersection of precious and industrial metals. As we navigate the intricate dynamics of the precious metals market, the historical perspective on the gold to silver ratio offers a beacon, guiding investment strategies in a world marked by uncertainty and transformation. The unfolding story of silver, enriched by the lessons of history, presents a compelling narrative of potential, urging a revaluation of traditional investment paradigms. In this light, Silver emerges not just as an asset to watch, but as a critical component of a forward-looking investment portfolio, offering both diversification and the promise of significant returns in the era of technological and environmental change. Let's keep on getting bigger and bigger. And at some point, um, you, you reach 
an area where the math just doesn't work anymore. And I think you can make the case that we're, we're kind of there now, finally, at long last, because uh, what's happened is um, inflation led the Fed to raise interest rates, which caused the debt costs on the U.S. national debt to, uh, there were the interest costs on that debt to spike. So we're up around a trillion dollars a year, just interest on the, the U.S. national debt. But now that we're borrowing so much more money um, in order to keep the economy going, we're running these big deficits, all of that has uh, an interest cost too. So in, in this year, in 2024, we're scheduled to issue $10 trillion of treasury paper. Now, $1.5 trillion of that is the deficit, which is borrowed money that we're going to have to pay interest on going forward. And the other $8.5 trillion is um, already existing debt that has to be rolled over at higher interest rates. So all this new debt being rolled over and taken on new um, at higher interest rates means the government's interest costs is going to spike again from here. So in the not too distant future, we're going to be at 1.5 trillion a year in interest, um, all of which has to be borrowed and then interest has to be paid on that. So as it accelerates, you get closer and closer to the point where it just doesn't work anymore. So, it, you know, are we right at that point? There's no way to know. Just like there was no way to know whether five years ago we were at the, uh, the end point and things were going to break down. Well, what we can say with certainty now is that we're closer to that point, and wherever that point is out there that just blows up the financial system, we're heading for it at an accelerating rate. So yeah, you know, debt did not destroy us in the past 30 years, even though it looked like it might at different times, but it's going to, you know, it's going to cause the financial system to break down somewhere, somehow, and you know, these current numbers, my God, a hundred or a trillion dollars every hundred days, and uh, $1.5 trillion in interest expense and $10 trillion of debt being rolled over. Those are all death spiral numbers. So I wouldn't think that it can go on much longer than this because already, you know, with $1.5 trillion of interest expense, the, the government takes in about $4 trillion a year in um, tax revenue. Well, if we're getting up towards interest expense accounting for half of annual tax revenue, that there's a death spiral number, you know, that's one where you just can't maintain that kind of a pace for very much longer. So I, I think we reached the point where things start blowing up, like the banking sector, for instance, the federal government has to step in and bail them out. And um, that leads to anxiety about what that does to the currency. And then things spin out of control. You know, we get another um, year like 2022 when inflation spikes to double digit levels almost and or in real terms double digit and uh, almost double digit in um, in official terms and that leads people to look at the effect on the dollar and the dollar starts to fall against real stuff not against other currencies don't look at the uh, the dollar index or anything because all that is is um measuring the dollar against other currencies that are being destroyed by, in some cases, even faster rates. So against real stuff, which is to say inflation spikes again. So all that's out there waiting to happen. The numbers point towards it being, you know, if not immediately imminent, coming fairly soon, you know? So things get very... As the narrative of Silver's ascent unfolds, a new chapter emerges, highlighting a strategic pivot in the world of investments, the resurgence of silver is not merely a tale of rising demand and constrained supply. It's a saga of informed decision-making, where investors recalibrate their portfolios in anticipation of the metal's burgeoning role in a rapidly evolving economic landscape. This strategic shift, driven by a deeper understanding of market dynamics and future prospects, marks a significant departure from conventional investment approaches, heralding a new era of opportunity and foresight. In this transformative period, Savvy investors are increasingly recognizing the value of incorporating silver into their investment mix. This shift is underpinned by a nuanced appreciation of silver's dual identity, as both a precious metal, offering a hedge against economic uncertainties, and as an industrial commodity, essential to the tech and green energy sectors. The strategic allure of silver lies in its ability to straddle these two worlds, offering a unique blend of security and growth potential. The role of silver ETFs has been pivotal in this strategic shift. By democratizing access to silver, these investment vehicles have not only simplified the process of gaining exposure to the metal, but also amplified its appeal among a broader range of investors. 
The liquidity and ease of trading associated with silver ETFs have further enhanced their attractiveness, making them an integral tool for those looking to capitalize on silver's potential. Moreover, the strategic approach to investing in silver extends beyond merely buying the metal outright or through ETFs. Sophisticated investors are exploring a variety of avenues, including mining stocks, futures and options, to leverage the opportunities presented by silver. This diversified strategy allows for a more nuanced engagement with the market, enabling investors to tailor their exposure to silver according to their risk tolerance, investment horizon, and broader economic outlook. The emerging narrative around silver also prompts a revaluation of the gold-to-silver ratio, a historical benchmark that has guided investment decisions for centuries. As this ratio continues to fluctuate, reaching levels that suggest silver's undervaluation relative to gold, strategic investors are using it as a barometer to gauge entry and exit points in the market. This dynamic, informed by both historical insights and projections of future demand, underscores the sophistication of contemporary investment strategies centered around silver. As we witness the strategic repositioning of silver within investment portfolios, it's clear that the metal's journey is reflective of broader economic and technological trends. The push towards renewable energy, the digitalization of the economy, and the search for sustainable growth avenues are all converging to elevate silver's status from a mere commodity to a cornerstone of strategic investment. In this context, the decision to invest in silver is not just a bet on the metal itself, but a visionary move that acknowledges the transformative forces shaping our world. As the narrative of silver continues to evolve, it invites investors to not only witness but participate in this historic realignment, offering a unique opportunity to be at the forefront of a financial renaissance powered by innovation, sustainability, and strategic foresight. There are a lot of things happening that, um, that point towards higher gold in the future. And I, the biggest and most long-term one, of course, is that we're destroying the global financial system. And um, if you look at what the U.S. is doing, for instance, we, um, we had double-digit inflation in 2022. And since then, we've had kind of high interest rates, but then the government took over with massive def deficit spending to keep interest rates from blowing up the economy. And so recently, we've been adding a trillion dollars of debt every 100 days in the US, uh, which is basically a kind of a death spiral statistic. When you're, when you're borrowing that kind of money and that kind of a time frame, that means you're headed towards that financial cliff at an accelerating rate. Uh, and that's very good for gold, too. So, you know, there's no way to know why it's up right now, other than to say that there's lots of good reasons for it to be up and lots of good reasons for it to keep on going up. Because really, um, 2100 is not any kind of a destination point for gold. Um, most of the guys who've, um, who've run the numbers where they look at, you know, what gold price would be necessary to back the world's fiat currencies um, at a 40% ratio, you know, they get humongous numbers. They get um, $10,000, $15,000 an ounce. And since we're heading for that kind of a currency reset, it's no reason, there, there is no reason to think that, um, um, you know, 2200 or 2500 or whatever is any kind of a terminal point. That's just, um, you know, a way station. There'll be, um, uh, fluctuations along the way, but gold is going to go much, much higher from here over time based on the horrendous mistakes. In this intricate dance of global economics and investment strategies, where precious metals play a pivotal role, the narrative of silver takes a broader turn, illuminating its place within the vast expanse of global economic factors. As we peel back the layers of this evolving story, we uncover the profound impact that macroeconomic trends and geopolitical ships have on silver shaping its journey, and by extension, its allure to investors and industries alike. At the heart of this exploration is the understanding that silver's fate is inextricably linked to broader economic currents. Inflationary pressures, for instance, have historically acted as a catalyst for rising interest in precious metals. Silver, with its dual identity as both an industrial commodity and a store of value, responds uniquely to inflationary trends. As currencies to value in the face of rising inflation, Silver becomes a haven for those seeking to preserve their wealth. Yet, unlike gold, silver's industrial demand also positions it for growth, as inflationary periods often coincide with heightened industrial activity, further tightening the supply-demand dynamics. Moreover, the global push towards renewable energy and electrification has placed silver in the spotlight, underscoring its critical role in solar panels, electric vehicles, and numerous other technologies that define our sustainable future. 
The Green Revolution, therefore, not only represents a shift towards environmental stewardship, but also signals a fundamental realignment in the demand for silver, propelling its value in an era increasingly defined by clean energy initiatives. The geopolitical landscape, too, plays a significant role in shaping silver's trajectory. Trade policies, sanctions, and international relations can have immediate and profound effects on silver's supply chain, affecting everything from mining operations to global distribution networks. As geopolitical tensions rise, so does the desire for secure investments, often leading to increased interest in precious metals like silver. Furthermore, the digital transformation of economies presents both challenges and opportunities for silver. On one hand, the digitization of financial systems and the rise of cryptocurrencies introduce new avenues for investment and speculation, potentially diverting attention from traditional assets like silver. On the other hand, the physical demands of digital infrastructure, from semiconductors to renewable energy sources, underscore silver's indispensable role in the digital age, bolstering its long-term prospects. In navigating the global economic factors influencing silver, investors and industry stakeholders must adopt a multidimensional perspective, considering not only the immediate market conditions, but also the longer-term trends shaping our world. The strategic significance of silver, therefore, transcends its current price or market dynamics. It embodies the intersection of economic resilience, technological innovation, and sustainable development. As we stand at this crossroads, the story of silver is a testament to the complexities of the global economy and the shifting paradigms of investment and industrial demand. In this light, silver emerges not merely as a commodity to be traded, but as a symbol of the evolving relationship between economic systems, technological progress, and the quest for a sustainable future. The narrative of silver, enriched by the backdrop of global economic factors, invites us to rethink our approach to investment, industry, and the environment, heralding a new chapter in the saga of precious metals. As we approach the zenith of our exploration into the ascension of silver, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment, the apex of our narrative. Here, we distill the essence of our journey, converging on the compelling conclusion that underscores the remarkable potential for silver to outshine even gold in the near future. This culmination isn't merely speculative. It's rooted in a confluence of factors that substantiate silver's ascent to unprecedented heights. Silver's journey to becoming more precious than gold is underpinned by its increasing rarity, a consequence of both its vast industrial consumption and the finite nature of its reserves. Unlike gold, which is largely hoarded and recycled, silver is consumed in myriad industrial applications, many of which do not allow for recovery. This fundamental difference between the two metals has set the stage for a future where silver's availability becomes increasingly constrained, pushing its value to new pinnacles. The booming technology sector, with its insatiable appetite for silver, serves as a powerful engine driving this transition. Silver's unparalleled electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, and reflectivity make it indispensable for countless technological applications, from solar panels and electric vehicles to smartphones and beyond. As the global economy continues to digitize and move towards sustainable energy sources, the demand for silver is projected to soar, further tightening the supply-demand dynamics. Moreover, the historical perspective on the gold-to-silver ratio provides insightful context for silver's potential revaluation. With the ratio currently at levels far removed from the historical average, there's a compelling argument for a significant correction. Should the ratio narrow in line with historical patterns, particularly as silver becomes scarcer and its industrial demand continues to rise, we could witness a dramatic revaluation of silver relative to gold. This conclusion is not drawn from thin air, but is a logical extension of the detailed analysis and trends we've explored. The case for silver's emerging dominance in the precious metals market is robust, supported by both historical precedents and forward-looking indicators. The strategic implications for investors, industries, and economies are profound. As silver ascends to new heights, it invites a revaluation of traditional investment strategies, urging a forward-looking perspective that acknowledges its burgeoning role in the global economy. In closing, the narrative of Silver's ascent is a testament to the dynamic interplay between rarity, industrial utility, and economic trends. It highlights the importance of looking beyond conventional wisdom to understand the forces shaping our future. As we conclude this exploration, let us not forget the broader implications of this journey, which extends beyond the realms of investment and industry touching upon themes of sustainability, technological progress, and the evolving landscape of global economics. The story of silver is far from over, it's entering a new chapter, rich with potential and promise. For those willing to look ahead, the future of silver shines bright, offering a beacon for strategic investment, 
and a symbol of our adaptive, innovative spirit in the face of an ever-changing world. In this final act of our journey through the transformative landscape of precious metals, we've arrived at a moment of profound insight and strategic foresight, the apex where we unravel the potential of silver to not just parallel, but vastly outperform gold, driven by a convergence of rarity, industrial demand, and economic forces. This isn't merely speculation. It's a forecast grounded in a meticulous analysis of market dynamics, historical patterns, and forward-looking indicators. Here, at the pinnacle of our exploration, we present a compelling case for silver's ascent to unprecedented heights, a scenario where it could eclipse the $3,000 mark, reshaping the precious metals market and offering astute investors a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The foundation of this bold prediction lies in the stark reality of silver's increasing scarcity relative to gold. Unlike gold, which remains largely static in vaults, silver's consumption across a spectrum of industrial applications is relentless, leading to its perpetual diminution. This industrial appetite, particularly from the burgeoning technology and green energy sectors, is set to intensify, propelled by global shifts towards sustainability and digitalization. As these sectors expand, the demand for silver will skyrocket, straining the already tight supply-demand equilibrium and pushing prices to new frontiers. Moreover, the historical gold-to-silver ratio, a metric that has long guided investors, currently stands at a precipice, signaling a significant undervaluation of silver compared to gold. This divergence from the historical norm suggests an impending correction, one that could see silver's value soar as the market recalibrates to address the disparities in rarity and industrial utility between the two metals. This apex moment is not just an analysis, it's a call to action for investors and industry stakeholders. The signs are clear. Silver is on the brink of a remarkable revaluation, one that could redefine its role in the global economy and offer strategic investors unparalleled opportunities. The narrative of silver, enriched by its dual identity as both a precious and an industrial metal, is evolving, and with it, the strategies for capitalizing on its potential. As we conclude this exploration, we reiterate the importance of vigilance and strategic foresight in navigating the precious metals market. The ascent of silver, underscored by its dwindling availability and surging demand, presents a compelling investment narrative, one that requires a nuanced understanding of market dynamics and a readiness to act on emerging opportunities. In closing, let us not view this apex as an end, but as a beacon guiding us towards a future rich with potential. The journey of silver, from an undervalued asset to a cornerstone of technological innovation and economic resilience, is a testament to the transformative power of strategic investment and vision. As we stand on the threshold of this new era, the message is clear. The time to reassess the role of silver in your investment portfolio is now, as we embrace the unfolding possibilities of this dynamic and invaluable metal. Remember, this is not financial or investment advice, but a perspective on the evolving landscape of precious metals, inviting dialogue, exploration, and strategic positioning for the future. As you contemplate the role of silver in your portfolio, consider the broader implications of this moment, not just for your investments, but for the global economy and the technological advancements that define our age. The future of silver is bright, and the opportunities it presents are as vast as they are compelling.